good afternoon guys and I'm, here, I'm a researcher mostly so my role is trying to reach pre and post harvest to try to get quality and today we are talking about export and we are talking about personal maturity as I consider a very important part of growing any kind of fruit for the simple reason that we need to deliver to the consumer like my said we need to know what are the people we try to sell and everybody they want consistency in high quality so that means for many things harvest timing and understand how the variability is in the trees in the orchard spatial and all of them so this we try a bit of uh, research and uh, we try to we are using currently at Debbie or whatever it will be later, this machine. Most of you guys probably already saw it, but uh, this is a, a new technology that uh, correlates with fruit maturity. So with this one we are able to actually measure fruit maturity and this is a part of what uh, our research and my research specifically is doing lately in trying to understand and figure out how to apply this technology to the different fruit, the different species uh, to try to understand when is the correct time therefore making correlation between this the kind of technology and the classical destructive method to make people understand uh, when and how this technology can be used and for export especially it is very important to understand uh, what is actually the level of maturity and how that develops and affects your quality later so, if nobody actually saw this, uh, the, the, this DA technology is a spectrometry, it's a sort of spectrometry in the near infrared, uh, reads the chlorophyll content and correlates, it doesn't actually measure the fruit maturity, but correlates fruit maturity because it correlates with ethylene and uh, uh, produces this IAD, that is an index, it's a number that uh, is correlated, as we said, with uh, ethylene production from the fruit. So we put fruit in a jar, we get a lot of measurement through gas chromatography and through that way we are able to create a correlation. This is the most important part. When we correlate the fruit with the ethylene production, ethylene is an hormone that is produced by the fruit when it starts ripening. So there is a moment when there is no production at all of ethylene. As you can see here, this was done on William. There is no production at all of ethylene at the bottom there and then it starts with very small production and then it goes up and uh, it's an exponential growth. This is what a fruit when it ripens usually does. It always is like that and uh, if it does produce ethylene at harvesting. And uh, this is where we can actually act uh, in trying to understand when the fruit is ready to be picked. And if we go back a bit, like I said, through this machinery we are able to correlate and then we can correlate the number that this little portable, very nicely machine gives you out and then you are able to figure out what actually has happened to that fruit along the entire chain. So to go a bit faster, we did some, uh, some experiments on both Bartlett and the new variety, the Lania, to try to figure out what is actually the classes of maturity, so that correlation when the ethylene production starts. And then we ended up having a very nice, interesting thing, measuring the level of maturity, the development of maturity in the field for both pears, Lania and William. So we took this machine in the field, we followed a certain number of fruit attached to the trees and we ended up with these two nice <coughs> curves. And there is one important thing that I didn't personally know, I never realized that when we were using normal destructive colors and all those things, uh, measurements in the field, but see, pull from here to here and the William does as well, there is a moment that is long from 7 to 15 days where the pear is not actually maturing. It's actually attached to the field, to the tree, and is doing things, but it's actually not increasing that maturity. So there is no production of ethylene, there is no any of those things. And it's a strange thing, and to me, I spoke with other researchers because we didn't have this machine that is able actually to measure that, 
nobody actually knew that. So this is quite new and this is something that it could be investigated because I do believe that those two weeks is the trick of where to actually get quality web everything else. Just fast through this one, through correlation of this machine, of this technology with the destructive methods. As you can see, they are with color and firmness. Both the varieties were very nice, decent correlation. Just going fast, just to let you see it. Oh, it did say that it was not able to read well, didn't it? Anyway, okay, we didn't read this class. So we ended up uh, through ethylene measurements and trying to figure out the different, uh, the different classes. And so you can see the classes we use, the 0, 1, 2, 3, is just a method of, for us to measure, to, to identify them. And that is the IAD. Do you remember I told you that it was doing an IAD number? And that's those, the numbers that we choose to identify the different classes that uh, we actually harvested them and figure out and follow them how it was doing. The maturity at the time, as you can see that we had both a, very, a class of very immature fruit. Because of the problem that Marcel said, the fruit usually gets harvested too early. So we wanted to show and we wanted to understand what actually happens to that fruit when it gets harvested too early. Ah, that's the part that he didn't pick up. One little glitch, Lania, that is the one AMP0118, doesn't produce ethylene at harvest. Corel, Corel, Corella, whatever, whatever you want to call that one, doesn't produce ethylene at harvest. So that creates a small problem in trying to understand what is actually how to, if you are able to create your different classes in trying to identify when is mature, when is ready to pick, when is ready to eat, when is still immature, or you shouldn't get close to that fruit, even if a lot of people do. So we did a bit of a post-harvest, trying to figure out what actually was happening to that fruit and letting it ripen at room temperature. So I'm not bothering you with all the different measurements we did. We did quite a lot of them, as you can see. And, whoops, that was one too fast. And so we picked four different levels of maturities, as, we, as I saw, said before, and we followed the firmness in post-harvest. And so we had at zero point is the harvest time. As you can see, the first one that was class zero, that was very mature in William, is close to 10. It's very, it's very hard. However, a lot of people pick it at that level because I found nine on the shop. I found a nine kilogram per square centimeter boat on a shop. So people actually probably was 12 when it was picked that day. So we actually had the different maturity, we, different, we changed <coughs> both Lamia and Williams, and you can see the classes, they did have a very clear, strict change, different development, and statistically a very defined different development of firmness in post-harvest at room temperature, so that means let it just ripen, and so they did ripen differently. So that means that those fruit, they were in different maturity classes. They were actually behaving differently, and they will behave di differently when you actually put them in cold storage. It will not have the same curve in the in the development, obviously, because we ended up in 15 days having fruit already that they were to ripen. Probably we go several months, depending on what treatment you actually do to your fruit. However, it is possible to follow up, and they were completely different classes, so we actually did succeed. William was clear because it was ethylene production. With Elania, we were able to actually divide them clearly anyway, so we are tentatively, relatively confident that there could be maturity classes, but since we don't have ethylene, we need to reproduce a few times. Those dotted line is important because that is the, the firmness at which we started noticing um, post-harvest decay. <coughs> so the fruit was actually too soft, was starting to create a decay. So it was just when it appeared. There were a lot of fruit that didn't, but at that level it appeared. So then we took a cut and we said, Below this one, it shouldn't be actually even commercialized. Now, when we attached the DA, so the number that this machine gave out, 
and we take the same line that is, and that is our bottom line, you see this is helpful because you can try and predict. If you have the development and we can do it and we can monitor and this can be monitoring even during, your, in, during cold storage, if you have the development, the curve of development of maturity of your fruit and you know what is your bottom line, that that could be when it's not commercialized anymore or what your, what your consumer wants, what your client wants, the level when you know the number that your client wants, you take your bottom line and you can start predicting when your fruit and what your fruit is doing according to that. That is the beauty of this small machine that is not only telling you the maturity, it's actually telling you that once you know the maturity of your fruit, you are able to always go in and identify what that fruit is in relationship to what your client wants. Mm -hmm. That is the most important part. You can take a decision, a real-time decision in saying this fruit can stay or it has to go or it has to be sold, it has to be done something or I keep it in the storage, but you actually can take a decision that is not only visible. And we know many times visible is actually tricky. I don't want to be polemic, but in, uh, in, in Europe, for example, applying smart fresh to pears, if it is or at least that what a lot of consumers that uh, researchers tell me, many times you can have a problem of color development. It doesn't actually color back. And then when you actually open your, your room, you are not able to figure out what is the level of your fruit and maybe it's already soft. But this machine would actually be able to still them. So that becomes important and you can actually predict what is the development and what is the behavior of your fruit. Now to check that one, we did a bit of likability. So we did like in, peg, like in stone fruit that uh, you do sugars divided by the acid level of the fruit. And that tells how much actually is the, the relationship between the two. So how actually is likable the fruit from the consumer. And this was that for Williams. <coughs> As you can see, we had the class, whoops. The class zero for Williams and the class zero, the blue line for both the two varieties, they never reached the bottom line where they started to <coughs> really become uh, a problem for selling because they never actually reached a, a decay. However, they never reached anything likable at all. They never reached the maturity where the fruit where they could have actually been marketable. Those fruit they get marketed, however, they taste and I don't want to say a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> they don't taste good. Like a lot of pears that you actually buy in the supermarket, they don't taste good because they were harvested too early, besides the shrivels of the, of the cob. As you can see, this class here, the blue one, related to the previous one, is the lowest and is always low and it gets even, even lower. That is actually worse. You keep it there, and it actually the taste of this fruit got even worse by it. it didn't actually ripen at all. And that is a lot of fruit that gets harvested normally. So it doesn't actually ripen, it becomes just soft, but it's incredibly bad taste-wise. While the immature fruit, if you leave it a bit, then it gets to ripen. It needs to ripen a bit, it needs to be ripened. So it doesn't need to be sold immediately, but if you leave it a bit, then it reaches a moment where it could actually be harvested, where, where it could be sold and actually could be liked normally and easily, like all the other three classes, that they were those that we consider where it starts ripening and where it was ready to eat. Obviously, the yellow ready to eat is the most liked because it was actually ripened on the, on the tree. What fruit it doesn't taste good when it's ripened? But the other two, they actually reached the class where it was similar. And it is possible to identify all of that to this machine and following what is the behavior, maturity behavior of the fruit in post-harvest with this kind of technology. So as a conclusion, we have these different classes that I don't want actually to be quoted too badly on it because it was a preliminary study that we tried, but this an important aspect and we see and we believe that actually this technology is applicable to pairs 
with big, a bit of a glitch when they don't produce ethylene that takes slightly bit adjustment because it's kind of shooting in the dark because you don't know and you be, you understand what is their maturity through post harvest behavior while if they produce ethylene you know it immediately at harvest of what is actually happening. So we do believe that this technology is applied is applicable to pairs to define the maturity and through defining maturity it is possible to predict and actually plan your entire production, pre and post harvest. And like Marcel said, planning is 90% of actually done of your entire work for your block, your everything. If you plan, it solves a lot of troubles. And so it correlates with the, dis with the destructive maturity, it can be used for picking the ideal time for harvest, for export as well, as well as internal market. And we can, a lot of pre and post harvest protocols can be based on this technology. They could and should be, on my opinion, but that is biased between brackets because I'm the researcher and I really would like, but I do believe that the growers and consumers would actually really gain a lot in redrawing protocols based on a technology that actually allows you to do real-time decision on them. And obviously there is always more research necessary to we can make sure that things they actually go as they are always supposed to when the theory does. And that's more or less it. If someone wants, has any questions, if we do have any do we have any time left? Okay.